Hello everyone, welcome to Broadview, my name is Joseph. In the early 1950s, the Japanese Kyoto University Primatology Group studied wild monkeys on Kojima Island. The group fed the wild monkeys sweet potatoes, which they had never eaten before. At first, the wild monkeys were hesitant about eating the sweet potatoes covered in dirt and soil. They just stayed there and stared at the sweet potatoes without doing much of anything. Until a female monkey took a sweet potato, washed it in seawater, and then ate it. After observing, the other monkeys imitated. More monkeys began to follow along, and when the hundredth monkey knew about washing the sweet potatoes, the added energy of this hundredth monkey somehow created an ideological breakthrough. Overnight, even monkeys in the tribe who had never observed or learned this social improvement were washing sweet potatoes before eating them. More unbelievably, around the same time, the Takasakayami monkeys from across the ocean began washing their sweet potatoes too. But the two colonies of monkeys were too distant to have any connection or contact. In the UK, a similar discovery was made. The British Birds Journal published an article about sparrows near Stoneham in Southampton, UK. Back then, milk bottles were closed using caps made of tinfoil. The sparrows got into the habit of puncturing the cap by hammering it with its beak and then drinking from the bottles. The workers tried to come up with ways to prevent the sparrows from stealing the milk, but all of their efforts had failed. This habit of grabbing free breakfast became widespread among the sparrows. It spread from this small town to many parts of England. It's incredible because sparrows don't travel far, nor do they fly high. Their range of activity is quite limited because they have small wings. But later, the same habit was observed across the sea in the Netherlands and Sweden. This phenomenon became known as the hundredth monkey effect. This theory led to fierce controversies among scientists, as you can imagine. The hundredth monkey effect is a hypothetical phenomenon in which a new behavior is spread rapidly by unexplained means from one group to all related groups once a critical number of members of one group exhibits the new behavior. This transmission of information transcends the limits of time and space and appears to be something intangible beyond what science had previously explored. I find this effect extremely close to Freud's iceberg metaphor. The physical phenomenon of quantum entanglement, as well as superstrength theory and quantum mechanics. Our thoughts, perception, and beliefs are made up of energy. This energy is transmitted across various spatial dimensions. Once a certain number of minds share a common idea, or once a threshold of group consciousness is reached, then this shared knowledge would spread rapidly, beyond natural boundaries through extrasensory communication. It's almost as if the energetic biosphere of a species gets upgraded. Ultimately, everything in the universe is energy. We know this. The movement of matter is maintained by energy. All existence has a unique level of consciousness and a corresponding energy level. Albert Einstein's mass-energy equivalence formula confirmed that all objects having mass have a corresponding intrinsic energy. Physicists have also proven that all objects in our world are composed of rotating particles. Each particle vibrates at its own frequency. Through the vibration of particles, our naked eye sees the world that we know today. The same is true of that of our human body. Scientists use instruments to measure the vibration of people in different states of life and spirituality. Each state showed a unique vibrational frequency and emitted its distinct energy field. This finding is an eye-opener. We went through the human energy fields in detail in our past program, so I won't go over them again. Today, I wanted to focus more on the energy level directly guided by consciousness. I also wanted to talk about how to measure and identify positive and negative energy. This is important because our energy level determines our destiny as well as our success or failure in life. By increasing our energy level, we could improve our lives and even change our destiny. So is there a way to measure energy levels when it's invisible? Well, yes, there is. Dr. David R. Hawkins was from the United States. He had studied people from around the world for more than 30 years, including the United States, Canada, Mexico, South America, and Northern Europe. After collecting millions of data points, he conducted sophisticated statistical analysis. Finally, he came up with a map of consciousness. He found that the different states of human consciousness determine the energy levels of human beings. Let's take a look at his map, scaled from 1 to 1,000. For energy levels below 200, people belonging to this group fell into the trap of egotism. They emit negative energy and have a hard time coping with all aspects of life. While overcoming challenges in life, they can barely make ends meet. Calibration levels 200 is called courage. At this point, the energy starts to turn positive. 
The people who meet or surpass this level of consciousness use the positive energy to learn new job skills and live a relatively stable life. For energy levels of 250 to 310, people go through growth and improvements. They are destined to succeed in life while gaining high status and wealth. At level 500, the people demonstrate unconditional love or benevolence. Their motivation comes from the urge to benefit others. They are forgiving, nurturing, and supportive of others. From this group of people, great music, art, and architecture were created. Only a small percentage of the world's population can achieve this state. People with energy levels of 700 to 1000 are dedicated to the great cause of spiritual redemption. Anyone who has reached this level can be considered to have reached an advanced level of spirituality, such as the Buddha Sakyamuni or Jesus Christ. Legend has it that when Jesus entered in a village, his energy caused the villagers nearby to only think about God in their hearts, with no other human thinking. The highest and fastest frequency that Hawkins encountered was 700, which appeared when he was studying Mother Teresa. Mother Teresa was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize in 1997. It's said that the moment she walked into a room, the hearts of the audience members present were filled with joy. Her presence made the room free of distractions and resentment. This reminds me of another story about Mother Teresa. When civil war broke out, Mother Teresa went to the commander in charge. She told him that the women and children in the war zone couldn't escape. The commander in charge told Mother Teresa that he wanted to seize fire, but the enemies wouldn't back down. Mother Teresa went into the war zone. As soon as the two sides heard that Mother Teresa was in the war zone, they both chose to seize fire. After she brought out the women and children from the war zone, the two sides resumed fighting. Later, the news reached the United Nations. Secretary General of the United Nations Kofi Annan was in awe of Mother Teresa. The UN had mediated several times earlier, but the civil war never ceased. It was totally unexpected that upon her walking into the war zone, both sides would immediately seize fire. I think this may have been the result of her incredible positive energy field. Could increasing our energy level change our destiny? People have their own natural energy levels, which determine their destiny. The unique energy levels also attract others with the same levels of frequency. Individuals with higher energy levels would have more positive energy. These individuals would feel happier and more successful in life. If we get stuck in a lower energy level, then we would ultimately attract negative people and experiences. Of course, there's no need to feel frustrated about not attaining a high energy level. It's unrealistic for most people to reach the energy level of Mother Teresa all in one fell swoop. But we can still improve and enhance our existing energy level. Even if we have just a bit more kindness and forgiveness in our hearts, it might already begin changing our destiny. Do you think it's unlikely? Well. Let's take a look at a video that was posted on social media. This man is arguing with a woman. They were really angry at each other, as you can see, and the verbal argument was only getting more intense. An elderly lady happened to be crossing the street and accidentally dropped a bag of apples on the ground. The woman saw it, so she started helping the elderly lady to pick up the apples. At first, the man was still angrily quarreling with the woman, but suddenly he also had a thought of kindness and started to help picking up the apples. Just as he stepped away, a huge sign happened to fall down exactly where he was standing. His small, kind gesture saved his life. Now, let's watch a video showing an opposite scenario. This man kicked the tree hard. Well, he seemed to have hurt himself pretty badly. Positive energies result from kind thoughts, while negative energies come from dark emotions. In Buddhism and Taoism, it's traditionally been believed that good is rewarded and evil is punished. And that just makes sense. In the man's case, a kind thought prevented him from being hit on the head. But in a group of 100 people, this energy can be passed on and influence others around us. Just like the story of the monkeys that we mentioned in the beginning. Positive energy resonance created by 100 people may influence others from all over the world and bring good fortune to all mankind. It doesn't matter who the 100th monkey or person is. What matters is the persistence of the first 99 people for upholding the flow of positive energy. Dr. Hawkins explained, Success is neither something that we have nor something we do. It is the automatic consequence of what we are. It seems that in order to raise our energy levels, we should not depend on external circumstances, but rather improve our character from within. Well, that's it for today's program. Did you ever wonder what your level of consciousness is at? I'd love to hear about your unique insights on this topic. Please feel free to leave your comments below. And if you have any other topics of interest in mind, I hope that you'll let us know. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.